For most of us, wood and its texture is closely connected with concepts like peace, life and authenticity. When we look at wood or when we touch it, we sense love and a close bond with nature. That's why through the centuries wood has always been used and it is still a favourite material among many artists. Now to that, add the element of fire. Heat, enthusiasm, passion and energy. Today we're going to learn and see more about an art form that burns and creates. This is the art of wood burning, the art of drawing on wood but with burn marks. In this technique, wood is used as a canvas and heat is the colour transferred to the picture. The type of wood and the amount of heat which is controlled by the artist are two factors that are regarded as very important in this art. Ali Akbar Nasrabadi has been painting for more than 40 years. For him, painting is a way of self-expression and in his journey to voice his feelings and state his beliefs, he turned to the art of wood burning. For him, wood and fire are the best tools that can articulate his sensations. The tools in wood burning are few and simple. All you need is a wood burning pen, which is a device with a metal end through which heat is transferred to a removable tip. Looks easy, but it's actually a tough job. You have to be slow and steady. If you're too slow, the wood will burn. If you go too fast, the wood won't really burn like you want it to. But despite all its difficulties and challenges, Ali Akbar Nasrabadi is in love with this art. For him, wood is a canvas, and interestingly, not a blank one for him to draw on. In their texture, the trees hide a story, and it's up to him to find it and tell it to everyone else. Drachton Adam Hoyman has a man, but Drachton half misana, but have you had half misana? Mat Hamome. این چوب های خودم رو رفتم از طبیعت پیدا کردم از این نرفتم به حال درختی رو ببرم طبیعت رو آسیب بزنم و بیام یه تیک چوبی رو درست کنم که روش نقاشی بکشم هیچ وقت طبیعت رو ما اجازه نداریم آسیب بزنیم به خاطر اینکه مثلا نقاشی چوب سوز بکنه The interesting thing about wood burning is that it's one of the oldest forms of art recorded in history and by that I'm talking about the days when early humans created designs using the remains of their fires. Now although through the centuries the tools and the techniques have changed, this art form is still about the constant battle between wood and the flame. But despite all its difficulties and challenges, Ali Akbar Nasrabadi is in love with this art. For him, wood is a canvas and interestingly, not a blank one for him to draw on. In their texture, the trees hide a story and it's up to him to find it and tell it to everyone else. Everything in nature has its own graceful story attached to it, and if trees could talk, they would tell you their own tales of life. Let's listen to their voice, uttered silently in their leaves and branches. Hodalesky for Iran.
We are heading to the village of Gilead in the Talagon district, a place that's very close to the heavens. Gilead experiences a lot of snow and is usually cold throughout the year. So much so that even if you visit it in April, you will still encounter snow-covered heights. But from May onwards, it's all rain and flowers, a rather refreshing atmosphere. Gilead is also the birthplace of the famous Iranian theologian Ayatollah Talerani. This is one of the reasons why this village has entered the limelight. Ayatollah Talerani's historical house is a mud brick building dating back to around 150 years ago, built during the Qajar period, through which a beautiful stream of water flows, giving it a warm and welcoming air. The village of Veshte is another attraction located in the northeastern heights of the Talagan district, with a cold and mountainous climate that has steep slopes along the alleys and also very beautiful springs and almond orchards. But what makes Veshte even more attractive is its salt pools, the salt of which is both medicinal and edible. One salt mine is called Susarak or Namak Chal, the veins of which start from under the Shahrud River and reach the surface. In this village, in addition to salt water springs, there is also a fresh water spring. It is interesting to know that in ancient times there was a pool about two and a half meters deep in the path of the spring and between the two rocks, where people would lit fires to heat a large stone. After heating it, they would place it in the pool, thus heating the water and used it for hydrotherapy. It is said that the salt water of this spring is used to treat leg pain, back pain and other joint pains, as well as skin conditions. More interestingly enough, they would eat local butter and honey after hydrotherapy. The historical monument of Pir Veshte, or Pir Nemire, is located in the village of Veshte, on the heights overlooking the village. This small Rome shrine was built with stone, sand and lime mortar. The shrine and its cone-shaped octagonal top, which has a short ridge and arch, stand atop natural rock. At present, the outermost layer of the conical roof has been completely destroyed and no trace of it remains. Inside the building is the same and only a few pieces of turquoise wall tiles can be seen. Nothing can be found pertaining to the lineage and ancestry of Pir Veshte, but one of the elders of the village says that he remembers a marble tombstone inside the structure with sentences carved upon it, including The holy tomb was commissioned by the order of Sultan Mirza Ali Laz for the elder man, Namire. Unfortunately, he didn't recall the date engraved on the marble stone. There are many shrines and mausoleums scattered around Iran that are sanctuaries for all who might be in need of one. People will walk long distances to not only pay their respects, but also to take in the calm that surrounds such places. 
The holy shrine of Yusuf ibn Moses ibn Jafar is one of those. Even these walnuts and cypress trees that are said to be more than 200 years old seem to enjoy the company of the shrine and its eternal host. Even though it was a short trip lasting just over 24 hours, we all felt so close to nature for a change, as well as feeling refreshed, as if we had been away for many days. What a place and what an air.